Hello, my name is John Rose, and today I'm going to take a closer look at 20 main joints in our body that have 86 ranges of motion. And this is something I do every day, and it's one of the many reasons why I don't feel like I'm 65 years of age. Just turned 65 last month in the middle of June. And once again, I cannot relate to my age in any way, shape, or form. Psychologically, I still feel like a kid. Biologically, I have biomarkers of teenagers. But that's not the only reason why I feel so good. Of course, one of the main reasons is I have passion in my life. I'm on the hero's journey, and that makes all the difference when you look at your mental and emotional health. And it all ties together, but the foundation is the body. <clears throat> you know the old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. So you guys are in for a treat today because I'm going to show you what those 20 joints are. I'm not going to count the fingers and the toes, but look what I just did. I stretched them. I moved my range of the motion. Excluding the fingers and the toes, we've got 20 main joints. I want you guys to understand. I want you guys to move them in every direction every day because if you do, you do that every day, you're going to be able to feel like a kid like I do every day. Now, there are four main joints in our spine four in each arm and four in each leg. The arms and the legs both have 16 ranges of motion each. That's 64 ranges of motion that we want to make sure we go through every day. And then the spine, the back, has 22 ranges of motion. Let's start with the spine. We've got the upper spine, the middle spine, the lower spine. So there's three main joints, we call them. The fourth one, many of you guys might not know about, it's an important one to, uh, to understand. It's called the sternoclavicular articulation. And it has four main ranges of motion we want to use every day. So before I come out here to my office outdoors, I make sure I go through all those ranges of motion. And one of the very first ones I like to use is that sternoclavicular articulation. Another good stretch that you can incorporate with this would be the sun salutation from Hatha Yoga. I used to do that many years ago and I kind of do a modified version of that now. But what I like to do right off the bat is when I get up, first thing I do is I hang up on my chin up bar. I've got a chin up bar in, in, in the door of my kitchen and I just grab a hold of that and I just hang. Boy, what a great stretch that makes you feel so good. But what I'm doing is I'm stretching my sternal clavicular articulation. Four range of the motion, up and down forward and back. So what I like to do right off the bat is I like to reach up to the sky when, I, when I'm really getting ready to do all these stretches and I extend my shoulders up and then I reach even further. I try to elongate my spine because you can elongate your spine. You can even condense it, shorten it down. But I like to go up, line it up and go up. And this is where that sun salutation comes in because then once you get up, then you can tilt it back and then you can lean back. So now what we're doing, folks, is we're stretching the back backwards. Now we want to stretch it forwards, and that's as much as I'm going to do right now. But otherwise, if we look at this in a more of a sequential format, we could say, okay, we got the three areas of the, of, the, of the spine, and we got the sternoclavicular articulation. A good way to start once you do that one basic stretch is to say, okay, let me use my head to go lean forward and back. That's, see, there's... When you look at the spine, three sections, each one has six ranges of motion. We can lean forward and back. We can tilt to the right, tilt to the left, and then we can look to the right and look to the left. So there's six ranges of motion. Six, six, and six is 18, plus the four is 22. So you can start off easy and slow just by putting your, your head forward and back. Then you can just do the upper spine only, not doing the rest of the spine. Go into the right, go into the left, and then you can look to the right and you can look to the left. And then again, you can add some shoulders into that, forward and back, forward and back. And now you can incorporate the rest of the spine. So when you lean forward, you can go ahead and lean forward again, lean forward again, go all the way down. Now, part of the sun salutation, which I'm not going to be able to illustrate, I'm going to still do it anyway. <laughs> you won't be able to see me, just visualize what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go down to the floor, like I am right now, and I walk my hands out, and then I bend my back where I'm leaning backwards, and then I come right back up. Did you see it? <laughs> of course not, but you can visualize what I just did. I walked on out. So now I'm stretching the rest of part of my, of my back. 
then we can also lean right and left. So again, start with the upper part of your neck, the upper part of your spine, then the middle part, and then the lower part. And reverse the order, come back. Go the other way. Just simply tilt your head to the left, ear to shoulder, then stretch the middle part, and then the lower part. I'm going through this very quickly, but you get the idea, right? I just now went through 22 ranges of motion. Up and down, forward and back, right and left, right and left, forward and back. Then we've got the arms and the limbs. There are 16 ranges of motion in each arm and limb, and there's four main joints, but the joints are different from the legs and the arms. And with the arms, I like to start with the shoulders. Again, we've got eight main ranges of motion with our arms going into our shoulders. We also have eight ranges of motion going our legs into our hips. One of the best ones I like to do is just rotate it. Rotate them together. Go the other way. That's one of the, these are two of the eight ways we can move the, the shoulders. Then, of course, the arms go up like this. They go out to the side, and then they come across. So there are eight ranges. There's eight ranges of motion I just showed you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do that every day. We do the same thing with our legs. The legs can do the same eight ranges of motion going into the hips. But then when we get to the elbows and the knees, things change up a little bit. The elbow is simply a modified hinge joint. It's pretty hard not to use that one, right? We use that one all the time, right? Yum, 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 yum. Knees a little more different. It's a modified hinge joint. Not only can we bend it this way, but then once it's bent, I don't think I can show this, but I'm going to try. Once, it's, once you, you bend it and you can extend it, you can also pull it this way and pull it the other way. So the knee has four ranges of motion, unlike the elbow only having two. Then we get, when we get down to the next section, the arms are totally unique in that there is a joint in between our elbow and our forearm, or our wrist rather. The forearm is a joint, it's called a radial ulnar articulation. It has a range of motion, you see what I'm doing, I'm turning the doorknob. Very important joint to understand in sports. It's used anytime you're going to hit something. Even bowling, you're going to rotate the form. If you're throwing, you're going to rotate the form. If you're striking something, you're going to rotate the form. If you're playing tennis, you strike, you, you rotate the form. If you're playing baseball or golf, you rotate the form. You can rotate the form the other way and put slice on it. So this is a really important range of motion, especially for athletes. It's the main joint we accelerate when we want to explode into a shot. Then we want to use the wrist mainly for control. Now the wrist is interesting, it's a lot different than the ankle. The wrist has four ranges of motion, flexion and extension, but then we can go like this. So there's another range of motion we want to make sure we use every day. Interestingly, the neck can rotate around, the arms and legs can rotate around, so can the wrist, but it does it differently. Partly also, not only because it, the wrist can do this, but then you got that radial ulnar that can rotate and also add another rotation to it. But then when we get down into the legs, the ankle is a little bit different. There is actually two joints down in our ankle. One is the ankle that does like this for the wrist, but then the ankle doesn't go like that, but it can go like this. And that's what's called the subtalar joint. That's where we can roll one way or the other. When we sprain our ankle, this is usually what we end up doing, we sprain our ankle. I did a video specifically on how to, the ultimate solution for sprained ankles. I also did a video on the five major components of fitness. And flexibility is really number one. I'll also put links down below, I'll put a pinned comment, showing all my other videos related to exercise. But this is one of the most important because we want to understand every range of motion we have. We want to make sure we use every range of motion and then we can take special time and stretch certain joints for whatever reason we might want to. If you participate in a, sp a certain sport, for example, tennis players, you'll see them stretching this out a lot. You'll see them stretching this out a lot. Uh, runners, they'll be stretching this runner's lunge where you're pulling the knee back the other way. Yoga is, is great. You see them sitting in that pose where they've got the the feet angled up. Uh, I got into yoga when I was very young, in my early 20s. I liked the concept of hatha yoga. The concept was simple. 
uh, they believed that health had to do with having a flexible spine, and that's what they worked on, making sure the spine was flexible. So when you do yoga, you're twisting one thing one way, something else the other. So there's all sorts of combinations. We can take all these 86 different ranges of motion and, and combine them in many different ways. The main thing is we want to make sure we do them every day. And then to focus on those that we know might need some extra help and spend a little bit more time stretching. So, again, we've got 16 ranges of motion in every limb. The knee is different. The, the bottom part of our leg is different than the last half of our arm. We've got a modified, we only got a, a simple hinge joint here, a joint here, and one joint here. The leg is different. There's nothing in between the knee and the ankle. But then we got two joints down here, and then we got a joint here that's modified. And again, this, the results are the same. We can rotate our ankles the same way we can rotate our wrist, same way we can rotate our arms and legs, and even our neck, but they're all different joints and they all work differently. The key, once again, folks, is you have to understand this concept. If you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. There's a reason why I don't feel my age. It's because I make sure and move my body every day. I understand all five of those major components of fitness. And one of them is cardiovascular health. Now, I don't come out here like I used to and train where I really worked really hard aerobically for hours on end. So my resting heart rate is only in the mid-50s. Back 30 years ago when I was training, my resting heart rate was 40. Well, I tried to get it down below 40 and I finally gave up checking. I could never get it down below 40, but I was putting in a lot of exercise to get my heart to be that strong. So, but that's one of the components that we look at. Also, we have physical endurance and physical strength. Then we have the body fat percentage, but then that flexibility is one of the most important components of fitness we need to understand. And the reason why so many of us don't feel very good as we age is because we're not moving our body parts, and now we can't even touch our toes. But here's an experiment. Next time you go to touch your toes, try raising your arms up first, open up your rib cage, and then go down with your rib cage extended, and you'll go, hey, now I can touch my toes. For me, I can touch the palms of my hand on the floor because I've been doing this for 40 some odd years. Every day of my life, I make sure that I stretch my body. And it's not always the first thing I do, but the first thing I do when I wake up is I turn on my computer and I get behind that desk for a while. But then as soon as I change gears and I switch from my indoor office to my outdoor office, I make sure I go through these simple ranges of motion. <clears throat> and it may take me 5, 10, 15 minutes to do it. And I understand personality types are different. Some personality types that are physical like to do things quickly, so stretching for these people is a hard thing to do, especially if they do something like a static stretch. But there are different forms of stretching. I won't go into detail here. And I've done other videos on stretching where I showed how to stretch the lower body where you can't see this now. So be sure and take a look at my pinned comments uh, in this video, as well as the description in this video, uh, description box, where I show those other videos on stretching and other exercise videos. The key here, folks, is, is we, wanna, we wanna enjoy our life, don't we? And the best way to enjoy your life is to make sure you use it and you don't lose it. And then you gotta put some passion in your life. And there's only one way to really put some passion in your life, folks. So join the hero's journey. If you don't know what that's all about, you're in for a treat because this is probably their very first video because I talk about that all the time. Please check out my, ch my channel. It's all about the hero's journey. It's all about putting passion in your life. It's all about you making the most out of your life so that now living longer is gonna be worthwhile. Who wants to live long if the quality of life doesn't exist? You wanna be able to come out here and play like a kid every day of your life to the very day you die. And putting passion in your life, joining the hero's journey is one way to guarantee that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my seminar on how to take a solid food vacation. Remember, our body is the foundation. Everybody talks about the hierarchy, the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, which I call communal. If the foundation isn't sturdy, if it, the foundation is not sound, everything else is going to suffer. <clears throat> but all four of these affect one another. So you got to make sure you look at the big picture. You have to understand the key to religion and spirituality is understanding what we're missing. We're missing the coherent sunlight energy that makes us feel connected to everything where we don't have to think or intellectualize about anything. It's one of our senses. 
I'm not thinking about that breeze that's cooling me off right now that just came up out of nowhere. I'm not thinking about the birds I hear chirping in the background. But I am listening to it. These are our senses, folks. You don't think about those, although if they're weak, you can concentrate and hone in on them a little bit better. But the point here is you're not supposed to have to think about this stuff. You're not supposed to have to be told to be loving. You're not supposed to be given ten commandments or seven spiritual laws. It isn't that complicated. Just eat the food you're meant to eat. Don't alter it so that it's going to alter you. And then your body's not going to fall apart as you age. And then as long as you keep moving your body, you're not going to lose it. And when you put passion in your life and join the hero's journey, oh, that's when you're in for a treat.